What's going on guys, my name's Theo Atrix, and today we got a new Gillenor Gazette for the month of June. The Gazette contains information about upcoming updates, as well as insight into events that happened during the month. This time around we got a lot of interesting stuff, with new client info, boss bash winners, visuals for new items from the tombs of a mascot, as well as some inclusion and diversity changes. Let's get into it. As you know, the upgraded mobile client with overlays and plugins was fully launched this month and now any changes that Jagex makes to the Steam client will automatically transfer to the mobile client. So there's going to be a lot of features. Jagex teased a few of the upcoming updates. Firstly, they'll be adding hunter trap timers with a circle overlaying your traps. There's also going to be a counter on your cannon, showing how many cannonballs you have left. And you'll soon be able to track the herbivore with tile indicators. In the third quarter of this year, so from July through to September, Jagex is going to be making changes to old school to make it more inclusive. So with that, there's a bunch of changes being made. Jagex is removing the gender requirement from the recruitment drive quest and is adding a puzzle instead. The NPCs in Polnavich will keep their regular names rather than being referred to as Ali. Male and female ham members will soon have the same thieving requirement, both level 15. You'll soon be able to enter a relationship with either one of the heirs in miscellanea, no matter what gender you are. And they're also making the romance part completely optional for those that don't want to partake. Jagex is also removing the gender requirements during the giant dwarf quest, where you can only join certain companies with a certain gender. Cosmetic changes to your player, like changing your hair, clothes or gender, are soon to be free of charge. There's also some other smaller changes, and if you want to read about those, I've linked the post down below. At the beginning of the month, Jagex announced the Group Boss Bash, where Group Iron Man players could kill certain bosses to gain raffle tickets. In total, 1.4 million tickets were earned, and the highest number of tickets was earned by a group called Food Fighters, and a single player also managed to get 12,000 by themselves. Most of the tickets were earned by killing Bandos, and Zolcano, Cox, Zami, and the Winter Todd were not too far behind. The winners of the raffle were announced today, and the Iron Man group The Milkmen have secured themselves a lifetime of RuneScape membership. There's also nine runners up, and all of them got a year of free membership. In this month's Gazette, we got a bunch of new information about Raids 3, the Tombs of a Mascot. Jagex didn't announce an exact release date, but they are aiming to release in mid-August, so about a month and a half away. If you want to read about the new raids, I'll link the blog in the description, but I'm going to go over all of the new information that we got. So today we got a few teaser images of the bosses and rewards. These are works in progress, so Jagex might alter a few things. Zebak is one of the bosses we'll see in the raid, resembling a big crocodile, and is supposedly based on the goddess Krondus. We got a look into the arena today that you'll find Zebak, which looks kind of cool. A giant scarab called Kefri is another boss within the raid, and she's found in a room that looks a bit like a theatre of blood room. She sits on a huge pile of dung, so maybe we'll need a nose peg to fight her. We got a sneak peek at the new staff called the Shadow of Tumakin, and this staff is going to need 85 magic to wear, and wearing it triples your gear's magic damage and accuracy. You can see that it looks a bit like a trident. We got more information about the PvP arena in the Gazette as well, which is going to bring a bunch of new items and armor. The PvP arena will be released on the 6th of July, so a week away, but that's going to be a soft launch to make sure everything is up to scratch. So then the full release will occur the following week on the 13th. Jagex has announced that they'll be offering imbue scrolls, blighted wave sacks, and surge sacks with the release of the PvP arena. If you haven't seen the other rewards, I've linked a video I made about them in the description. In the Gazette, we got some new information about Quest Speedrunning, which is going to be a new game mode coming to old school, allowing you to replay quests multiple times to beat them as fast as possible. Today, Jagex announced the rules and logistics of the game mode. First, there's no tutorial, so you'll skip Tutorial Island and end up straight in Lumbridge. All of the accounts will be Iron Man, so there's no trading, and there's also going to be no PvP. 
mini games will be restricted on the world. And also, when you log out, cooldown timers will pause, so you can't take advantage of logging out and waiting for home teleports. Shops will have a static amount of stock, so items will never be sold out. There's also some item dropping rules to make sure players actually use a bank instead of taking shortcuts throughout the quest. And also, once you open a door, it never is going to close. We don't have a release date for this new game mode, but Jagex says they'll have more to share with us in the near future. Future. June was Pride Month, and Jagex brought us the 2022 Pride event along with a Pride March. Jagex thanked the community for taking part in the event and also stated that it was disappointing to see the hateful participants. Jagex says, If Pride is not something you can handle in old school, don't join. And if you have trouble not joining, we recommend that you simply do not log on to the game for the hour long duration of the parade. Jagex also says that in future, they would like to support Pride outside of the game. That's all they said. I'm not really sure if it means they're stopping Pride events, but I guess we'll find out. From the Pride March, Jagex put together a heat map showing the large amounts of players that took part. You can see everyone starting the march at the Pride event start area, and they make their way through Varrock, Lumbridge, and all the way to the Falador party room. Anyways guys, that's it for today's video. What do you guys think of all these changes? Is there anything you think should be done differently? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoy my videos, be sure to leave a like, and if you're new around here, subscribe for more old school videos. Thanks for watching.